this is revivalist Michelle Morrison. Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, welcome, welcome on Tuesdays, folks. Our ministry will be doing New Believers Bible Study. I'm changing it up a little bit because I'm being contacted from folks who are giving their lives to Christ. And so this is going to be Bible study. It's going to be five sessions. And I'm going to give you an outline of what we're going to be discussing over the next five weeks. Uh, part one is going to be salvation. Part two is going to be faith and assurance. Part three is going to be the power of the Holy Spirit. Part four is going to discuss baptism, water baptism, as well as baptism of the Holy Spirit. And part five is going to discuss trials. So this is a five part New Believers Bible Study. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for giving your life to Jesus Christ. You've just begun your journey for the rest of your life. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. And today, in part one of this five-part series, I'm going to be discussing salvation and what it means and what you have done and how you can live for Christ. Praise God. So, the Bible tells us that we are saved by faith. It's not by any works of our own folks. We're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. So Romans 10, 9 tells us that if we confess Jesus Christ as Lord, if we believe he rose from the dead, we are saved. And the Bible tells us we're saved by faith, not by work. So you've confessed Jesus, you've repented. And we're going to talk a little bit about repentance and what it means. But this first lesson on salvation, we're going to look at some scriptures, folks. Uh, scripture memorization is so important and uh, I want to encourage you to study the scriptures that I give each week and on our website, which is wkdmi.org, W as in Walter, K as in Kite, D as in Dog, M as in Mary, I as in Ingrid.org, you can go to our uh, page that says New Believers Bible Study. And we will have these lessons downloaded on that page. You can download them to your computer, print them up and follow along. So the first scripture, the Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved. As we study the word, this word is Rima, folks. It's life. It's going to change your life. The first scripture I want to give you to study as a new believer is John 3, verse 16. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That scripture was from the NIV version, John 3, 16. Most of the scriptures I'll be reading tonight will come from the King James Version, which is one of the oldest and most accurate versions of the Bible. But as a new believer, feel free to get the NIV, the New International Version, because it's easier to understand. So please memorize that scripture, John 3, 16 out of the NIV. Uh, and then folks, John 3, verses 3 and 7, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You would not be surprised at my saying, ye must be born again. Our Lord Jesus Christ is commanding us saying we must be born again. So in this lesson, you're going to learn why we need to be saved, how God has provided for our salvation, and how we can have that salvation personally. Folks, Salvation is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We're saved not by works, uh, not by things we do, but by believing in God. And then daily, he allows us to die to sin if we spend time in the word, in prayer, and find a local church because pastors there can pray for you. But we'll be having church online because this is how we're having it in this day and time. Stay in the word because God is able to touch you through this television screen. 
You want to find out when our church broadcasts are aired on Kingdom Purpose TV and follow this ministry because we are going to build your faith through Jesus Christ. We're on the air Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Mondays, we have a great prayer and intercession group on the radio, Kingdom Purpose Radio at 6 to 7 p.m. We're on here Tuesdays for Bible study at 9 p.m. We are on here Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we are on the air Saturdays at 4.30 p.m. You don't want to miss. Write these dates and times down and tune in so you can grow in the word. But especially on Tuesdays, I'm going to have these sessions that are going to teach you about what you have just done by giving your life to Jesus Christ. So you need to pray and ask the Lord to open your heart to receive his word. In fact, let's pray. I've prayed before this broadcast, but let me just pray by example. Father, even as we go into the word, we pray that you would uh, touch each and every listener with the rhema, the real uh, truth in your word. And as they pray, teach them how to pray for you to reveal your word to them in Jesus name. Folks, everything we do, we need to pray and seek God's direction because everything we do has to be led of him. So sin is basically the failure to obey any one of God's commandments. And we know in the Old Testament, he gave the commandments, thou shall not steal, thou shall not kill, thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. There's so many commandments. Um, but again, in the Old Testament, there was the law where we were bound by the law. Uh, so if you sin, there was penalty and death for sin. God could wipe out the entire nation as he did in the days of Noah. But when Jesus Christ came, there's now mercy. But the Bible tells us one, it, it just because there's mercy, should we continue in sin? God forbid. There is still a penalty for sin, folks. So we want to, first of all, get saved, allow your church home locally, find a church home. It's very important. Some people believe they can be uh, islands in and of themselves, but the Bible says not to forsake the assembling together of the brethren. Some of you will have to separate from friends that you've been with 10, 20 years. Why? Because the Bible says to come out from among them. Others who are rededicating their lives to Christ, you have not been able to triumph over areas of struggle in your life because you're with the wrong people. You're with the people who are going out to the clubs. You have to be able to invite them to church, not them take you over into the enemy's territory. So sometimes God will rearrange and change your friends. It's not because you're better. God loves everyone, but you have to protect and guard yourself so that you can remain safe later on when you're strong. You can invite them to church or you can invite them to church right now, but right now it's a time of separation. So how does the Bible describe sin? It says in uh, John 3 verse 4, whoever sins violates God's law. And what is the result of sin? <laughs> the wages of sin in Romans 6, 23, it tells us the wages of sin is death. And yet Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So how do we reconcile these two? The wages of sin is death, and yet all have sinned, and yet is by faith. It seems like it's a contradiction, but it's not. Let me explain it, folks. Basically, what the Lord is saying, uh, uh, you know, God in the Old Testament, sin just ensnared the people. The law and sin ensnared the people. So God found a way for people to have mercy and grace. And yet daily we have to die to sin. So we're saved not by any works of our own because none is righteous, but daily we have to die. And what this means is daily we have to ask the Lord to take different areas of our lives that are 
enmeshed in sin and help us to overcome. So daily, we're going to die to different areas of sin. And yet none of us achieve perfection. And I can just summarize it the way my old pastor used to uh, teach us, which is we don't want to be caught in habitual sin. It means that you don't want to make a purposeful decision that I'm going to go to the club, sleep around (laughs) and do all of these things. And then uh, think that there's not a penalty that's going to occur. We want to be able to die daily. Sometimes we can be taken off course, but we spend time in the word, time in church, and God will wheel us back in. So when you're saved, it doesn't mean you're going to be uh, able to conquer every area right away. So don't beat yourself up in condemnation. The Bible tells us there is therefore no condemnation for those who are pursuing after God, after the spirit. Praise God. So we see here that sin still violates God's laws and that Romans 3.23 tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin is death. Sin brings death. James 1.15. So to better understand the effects of sin, think of death as a separation from God. Spiritual death, your sin has separated you from God. Physical death, it separates the spirit from the body. And actually, physical death actually means that also Satan will come through sin to bring sickness, financial lack. He is waiting at the door, folks, and that's his turf, sinning. So we want to submit our lives to Jesus Christ, get prayed for, and make a decision also to separate and come out from the world because the enemy will mess with your stuff. Praise God. And then you have eternal death. If you remain lost in your sins, they will separate you from the mercy of God forever. So to be righteous means uh, to do right, to be totally innocent before God in regards to obeying his commandments. But none of us, again, are completely righteous. So again, we're made righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. He is the only one that's fully righteous. But daily, folks, we've got to die to sin. We've got to lay down different areas in our lives and not be enmeshed in habitual sin. That's the best way I could explain it. Each day we die. If you make a mistake, you repent. But don't just purposefully fornicate and say, oh, God's grace. Praise God. So again, just in review, Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned. And in John 3.16, what word explains why God would send his only son to die for us? That's the memory uh, verse. You have some little study uh, sections here that I want you to fill out when you download the class from the website. And uh, I'm going to ask you that question. What word explains why God would send his son to die for us? In John 3, 16, we know tells us that's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus loves you, folks. He loves you. Praise God. God sent his son, Jesus, to die that while we were sinners, we would have a way in for eternal life. And hell is real, folks. You see what's happening all around us. This world is just being (laughs) disrupted right in front of our eyes. The coronavirus, uh, forest fires, riots, Uh, 500,000 have died in the U.S. alone from the coronavirus economic turmoil. The unemployment rate is at all-time highs. You need to come to Christ. He's the only answer, and he's going to bless his people during this pandemic. I'm not going to tell you that you won't suffer in the gospel, but God is able to bless you and to bring you out, especially in a time of famine. So uh, Romans 5, 8 tells us that while sinners, Christ died for us. There are a few scriptures here I'm going to give you. 1 Timothy 2, 5 says that Jesus is the only mediator between us and God. 
Acts 4.12 tells us there is salvation in no other than Jesus. John 14.5 tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by Jesus. So these verses indicate that we are saved only by faith in Jesus Christ. God's word says sin causes death, though, and Jesus took that penalty upon himself in our place. Some other terms we're going to look at, what does it mean to believe? It means to cling to, trust in, and rely on Christ. And what does it mean to confess him, to admit guilt, or acknowledge one's sin? We're going to look at some other terms. The first one is believe. What does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? That means to cling to, trust in, and rely on him. Another term is confess. This means to admit guilt or acknowledge one's sin. The Bible uses several words to show the contrast between works and faith. We need to understand that we're not saved by works. Ephesians 2.8 says we're saved by grace, not works. Titus 3.5 says it not Titus 3 5 says it's not by works of righteousness that we have been saved, but by his mercy, by God's mercy. And then in the Bible, we see again that different scriptures talk about being saved by faith, not works. One of these scriptures is Ephesians 2 9. It says that we are not saved by works lest any man should boast. Justice means getting what we deserve. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. It is by his mercy and he forgives us. That's such a beautiful thing. Grace is getting something we don't deserve at all. By God's grace, not our own merit, he sent us his son. And faith is accepting something which cannot be proved by the senses. Faith is trust in God. And the only way I can explain that we're sitting on this chair and, and we believe this chair is going to hold our weight. So we sit on this chair trusting and believing that it won't fall. And that's the same thing. We can see God, but we believe by faith that he is. Faith is a powerful thing. Uh, folks, without faith, the Bible tells us it's impossible to please God. So we come to him by faith, believing. And uh, the Bible tells us the whole earth knows uh, that the creator is real. And sometimes atheists will say, well, God isn't real. I can't see him. I can feel him. But if we just look at the creation, how a man is made for a woman, how it's wonderfully made, we understand that God <laughs> made this creation. It didn't just big bang in and of itself. Praise God. We're fearfully, the Bible says, even the hairs on our head are numbered. So Romans 2, 4 tells us the goodness of God leads to repentance. My God, we're saved by his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. It's not by works, folks. So the last term I want to look at tonight is repentance, what it means to repent. Repentance basically means a change of mind, a change of heart, away from sin and towards God. So repentance is genuine sorrow for our sins. It is a desire to submit to God's will. When we repent, uh, the Bible tells us that the angels in heaven rejoice, Luke 15, verse 10. So repentance involves not just words, but a change in action, a true Heart transformation involves a change in your behavior, folks. And one of the greatest, one of the best means to achieving this is to simply ask God each day, come into my heart, change my life. Folks, he's able to bless you and change you right where you are. And if you mess up, especially as a new believer, it's not going to happen overnight, folks. I got saved and the first year I was doing good and then eventually I fell, but I got back up again. Keep getting back up. Keep going back to church. Keep listening to these broadcasts. I gave you the date for the broadcast. Contact me on Facebook. Our Facebook page is WKDMI. Just that's our public page. 
just inbox me and I or one of our counselors will be in touch with you folks have already inboxed and I pray for you or uh, counselors will pray for you help you to live a life that's pleasing with God but folks it's not always overnight. Some people get saved and on fire, yes, and never look back. Others, it can take a few times of falling and getting back up. But I'm here to tell you that there's none righteous, no, not one. It's just daily. We've got to consecrate. My old pastor used to describe it as a car without gas. If you're not spending time in the word, if you're not spending time in church, if you're not praying, if you're not spending time in praise. Praise is a powerful way to get close to God. Then you're going to be like a car without <laughs> gas and you're going to find yourself breaking down and opening up doors of sin to access you. And then a big part of it is making up your mind that I want to live for Jesus Christ. He's such a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on you folks. He died so you can live. And he's asking you today as a gentleman, will you give your life to me? Will you take steps to separate from sin, separate from bad company, stay in the word, watch these broadcasts, get on Facebook channels that are in the word. That's also being in the Dr. word. Dr. Michelle Morrison has fulfilled the commission to missions noted in Matthew 25, verse 35. In the U.S., she has led several evangelical outreach endeavors in the prisons, hospitals, and shelters of New York City since 2005. Since 2009, Yes You Can Community and Economic Development Corporation, our Christian social enterprise, has helped many low-income communities by hosting economic development seminars, providing resources to low-income people, battered women, and previously incarcerated individuals. In addition, Yes You Can has fed and clothed thousands of low-income individuals in the United States. Since 2014, we extended these efforts internationally by feeding and clothing widows and orphans overseas, assisting with the education for poverty-stricken children overseas, and helped hundreds of churches in their efforts to spread the gospel. Matthew 25, verses 35 to 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. If you are interested in making a financial contribution toward the vision of Yes You Can or World Kingdom Dominion Ministries, please visit wkdmi.org and click on the donate link on the donate page. You can also send donations to P.O. Box 981, New York, New York, 10008 and make checks out to Y-U-C. Open your Bible, read. God will bring you godly friends. Please inbox me on our Facebook page, WKDMI. And we will have counselors, godly uh, counselors to contact you and to help you along the way. We won't leave one stone unturned, one person lost because Jesus is a good shepherd. He'll leave the rest and go after the one. Praise God. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. So the last thing we're talking about tonight is repentance, a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of attitude, a desire to make a change in your life and to not do the things that we've done before. Folks, I'm here to ask you, this is our first lesson on salvation, but for those who are watching, I ask you each Monday to invite a friend to watch these new believer Bible studies. And if anyone within the sound of my voice is not saved, I'm going to ask you to repeat the sinner's prayer. If you want to give your life to Christ, folks, we are in some perilous times and Jesus Christ wants to change your life and give you eternal life. So if you're ready to make that decision, just repeat after me, Father God, I come to you a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Just say it out loud. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
I believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and change my life. And that's it, folks. If you repeated that prayer, the Bible says the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Welcome to the body. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. You can go on our website, wkdmi.org, visit the contact page, leave us a message, and one of our counselors will be in touch with you. I am so excited that you've decided to make a change. Visit our public Facebook page, leave a message. The public Facebook page is WKDMI. And before before I close out tonight, I just want to remind you to go to our website, wkdmi.org, and look at our tab that says New Believers, and download this Bible study, review it, stay in the Word, study the Word, meditate on the Word. I love you. Welcome to the body of Jesus Christ, and I'm just going to close out praying for you, Father God. I thank you in Jesus' name for my brother or sister who just gave their lives to Christ. Father, bless them where they are. Touch them. Oh God, we're crying out to you for souls. Change their lives. Wreck their lives for you. I cover them in the blood of Jesus Christ. I cancel every plot and scheme of the enemy over their lives. I bind every addiction and weight to the world. Every spirit of fornication, gossip, lying, cheating, stealing, unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, Satan. Release God's people now through the blood of Jesus Christ. I call the captain is free in Jesus name. And I thank you, Lord God, for giving them a fire and a desire for your word, a fire to tune in to this Bible study, to learn and God change their lives that cover their homes, their children, their families, their marriages in the blood of Jesus Christ. I cancel every attack of the enemy over their lives. I call for jobs during this horrible and terrible economy, businesses, business ideas. I cancel debt over their lives and lack in Jesus name. Lord, do a new thing in their lives. Let it spring forth in Jesus' name. Praise God. Love you, saints, with the love of Jesus Christ. Tune in every Tuesday. I will be on this broadcast with our new believers Bible study. Get your pens and notepads. Follow our ministry on this channel. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ.